Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet, and this is basically continuation of last video where we are looking into top seven learnings inside GIDS. It is Great International Developer Summit, and in the last video we have already covered three of them, and the rest of them we are going to cover in this particular video, right? So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Right. So let's move to next one, right? So question four. I'll go over here and open this guy over here, right? And we have this particular code, right? And here we have list of strings where we have multiple names over here in this list. So we have a list of names, right? And after that, what I want to do, I want to cover it to let's say uppercase. So I have some other list over here, just define so that I can fill in the uppercase letters, right? So I'm creating a new list so that I can add the uppercase names over here, right? After that, what I'm doing, I, I will just say names.stream. Right after that, what I will do, I will just map this particular element to uppercase. And after that, I'm using for reach, which is basically a terminal operation. And for each element, what I'm doing, I'm just adding that element to this particular list. So in uppercase dot add, and I will add that name, right? So this guy will add this particular uppercase name to this particular list, right? Everything seems fine. If I run this code, what we will get, we'll get seven and seven because we have seven elements inside this particular list. If you see, we have seven and at the end, we are just printing the size of the first list. And after that, we are printing the size of the second list that is uppercase list, right? Nothing big over here. And we are getting this particular respective output. If I run it again, we'll get the same output, right? Now everything is working fine. The question is what exactly is wrong with this code? What do you think is basically wrong? Now, if you see over here, we have a stream pipeline. So we have this stream and we are doing this operation, which is an intermediate operation. And after that, we have this terminal operation and this guy is doing some operation on the element inside this particular stream. But what this guy is doing, this guy is doing operation on an element, which is outside the stream, right? So this in uppercase is not inside stream, rather it is outside stream. So if you go back over here and try to visualize it, so you will see that we have this particular names, which is basically stream of names. And what we are doing for each, we are adding to a list, which is outside this particular stream. So this is basically stream pipeline, but we are trying to modify the list outside this particular stream. So this is external mutable list, which we are trying to modify through this stream. But what is the problem over here? Right. I'm, I'm modifying that. What is the problem? Everything is working fine, right? Let's say tomorrow someone comes and decide to change this guy to parallel stream. Right. Now, if I run this code again, what will happen? It is giving me the same output, right? 7, 7, right? But what I will do, I will try to run it multiple times. And in order to do that, what I will do, I will just simply add a for loop. So I've just added a for loop, which will run this guy multiple times, right? And now what I will do, I will just run it. So if you see the output, we are getting this particular output over here. But if you carefully observe, what is this six? You will see we are getting six elements many times, right? Why we are getting six? You will see that we are getting it multiple times. Here also we have six, right? So we don't have six elements. We only have seven elements, right? But what exactly is happening over here? We are getting wrong data. Now, let me just remove this for loop over here. And now what will happen if someone convert this stream to parallel stream and your code goes to production, right? Nothing fails. Nothing fails inside your local test. Nothing is failing. But in the production, when there is a heavy load, you see this kind of behavior. You see that one of the list have only six elements. Now, this may lead to some other exceptions when you actually use it, right? And now you are debugging your code, right? And you are trying to run this locally. What I will do, I will just try to run it locally. But locally, everything is working fine. Then what exactly is happening inside production? Well, that is the question, right? Well, that is the problem. And you cannot even debug it fine, right? You cannot even reproduce that issue inside local because this only happens when you are running it multiple times and some kind of race condition is occurring, right? So in that case, only this happens. Now, what exactly is happening? Now let me go back over here and let's go to this guy. Now we have same pipeline, but in this case we have parallel streams. So as we all know that stream pipeline is lazy in nature. That means it will be triggered on terminal operation. That means 
in intermediate operation it will just create a pipeline for you and when you hit the last operation that is for each it will trigger the pipeline and start processing your operations right and now here what is happening now we have multiple threads which is processing different element right now here let's say we are trying to add pushpa we are trying to add shrivalli we are trying to add keshwa right in this particular list but for each thread now this object is common this is only one unique object and all the threads are trying to access that guy right what if two threads are uh, trying to access the same memory location at the same point and what if someone overrides that particular element while doing that well that is something which we call as rest condition right and that may happen over here and that is why in some cases you see that there are only six elements right not seven only six and that is the problem and that is why you should not modify the variables outside your stream right because of these issues right so what is the other option over here you can make use of something called as collectors right so in collect function we'll just say collectors dot to list there should be collectors dot to list method and once you do that you can just get it in some other variable now so now we are getting it in a, a new list now if i run this code then we'll get this output now what i will do i will again try to put it in a for loop there we go so what i will do i will just run it real quick and now if you see there will not be any six over here so now if you see it is working just fine because we are not trying to modify any external list and perhaps this can also be converted to to list right simply to list and this will again just work fine if i rerun it again you will see that there is no data redundancy or there is no other problem with the output right so this is basically the solution on this one so the point over here is that we should not modify any external element right so there is a concept of a pure function pure function is a function which will not modify any external data right every function inside java should be pure right especially when it comes to stream because you will see such kind of issues right so that is basically the point over here and next time when you try to make use of streams inside java be careful that you are not modifying any external list right or any data which is external to that particular stream so that is basically your question four so i'll just go back over here streams and pure functions right so this also is covered all right so let's move to the next one real quick so question number five uh it should be this one let me just close all other tabs and i will zoom it there we go so what do we have here here we have array of integer right and we have one element over here that is two for that we have a list of one two three and we are caching it in a number by using a var keyword so it will just be a list after that what i am doing numbers dot stream and what i will do i will say map right so map what this guy will do this guy will convert each element in this particular stream by using this operation so what this will do each number will be multiplied by the factor factor of zero factor of zero is basically two here we should get output as two four and six right so that should be the output but after that what i am doing i am collecting it into a variable that is a stream right and after that i am changing the value of factor changing the value of factor to zero instead of two now it will be zero at the end what do we have we have stream that means this stream dot for each for each and i am printing it over here now what should be the output of this particular operation right what will be printed over here now if you see over here we should get this kind of output but let me just run it over here and if you see over here we are getting zero right that means this factor is coming into picture now the question is how this factor is coming into picture now if you remember in the last example also we have discussed that streams are lazy in nature right that means your stream pipeline will not be triggered but if you see over here this statement do not have any terminal operation we are just catching that stream and here for each is a terminal operation right if you hover on it you will see that it's a terminal operation that means this guy is responsible for triggering your pipeline stream pipeline so here your pipeline will be created but it will not be triggered once it encounters a terminal operation it triggers the pipeline and the operation on the pipeline will happen at that moment now by this time your factor is 2 right your pipeline is just ready and not triggered 
but at this point we are changing that factor to zero and once this terminal operation triggers the pipeline the factor will be zero and your output will be zero 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 because the factor is modified to zero right so that is basically the case now in java streams are lazy right but there are a few languages where the operations will happen eagerly right so if you are working on multiple applications you may miss this right so something to keep in mind right so this is something this is the code that we should avoid in the first place we should not do something like that rather we should terminate the streams we are opening right we should not terminate the streams at later point of time right so that is basically our question 5 very very simple right stream terminal operations right so we have seen that let's move to number 6 and this is again on a similar line so let me open that let me zoom it a bit so if you see over here we have another stream over here right so we have another stream here what we are doing we have stream of integers we are running it parallelly after that we are mapping it right so what we are doing we are just calling this transform method which will which will just multiply each number with two and before that it will just print the name of the thread after that what we will do we'll just do sequential stuff and print it again right now what will happen will it run in parallel thread or will it run in sequential thread again the similar concept that we just discussed in the last example comes into picture over here that streams are lazy in nature now this guy will create this pipeline and once the terminal operation is hit the stream will be triggered right so let's quickly run this code and let's see what happens so if you see over here everything is running in main thread right so main 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 right but let's see if i do this one and run it again i'm just commenting sequential then you will see that we have multiple threads over here so first one is running in main after that we have another thread right see this worker thread this worker thread we have many thread that means this guy is running in parallel now but the moment i uncomment this what happens the latest operation that we are giving over here takes precedence because streams are lazy in nature right the last one which we define the last model that we define will come into picture when we trigger this pipeline right very very simple right a small concept that i wanted to cover this was also mentioned there in gids right very very simple so we have seen that one as well let me just it is again on similar line so what i will say parallel and sequential streams so i will mark it as done as well right so let's move to the last one right so question 7 and this one is very easy right this one is very easy if you already know that so let's see over here so let me zoom it a bit again if you see over here we have array list okay so new array list i'm adding few elements over here now what i'm doing i'm iterating over this list and if name equals bob then what i will do i will just remove that particular element now most of you say that okay we are iterating over a list and we are modifying the list this is the example of concurrent modification exception right i know you know this i know that many people know that this will throw concurrent modification exception right but let me run this code now did you see this this is not throwing any error we are getting the result just fine now what if i do this i will just add one more element let's say i will say chetan right and now if i run this now do you see what happened now we are getting concurrent modification exception what exactly is happening in one case we are getting exception in other case we are not so let's try to visualize what exactly is happening over here now let's say we have these three elements right we are processing these three elements and we are processing them in a loop now our friend for loop so this is basically enhanced for loop right this guy uses iterator internally to iterate over a list right and here let's say while processing first element it will be pointing to alice right and once we process that and move to next one it will point to bob right that means it will be pointing at index 2 right so let's say this is 1 2 3 right so it will be pointing at bob now but now we are removing bob right now we have charlie over here iterator do not have anything to move to right iterator do not have anything to move to that's why it will skip this particular iteration and your charlie's process your loop of your charlie will be skipped silently right and it will stay the same and you are getting that particular output right so 
you will get this particular output over here but the moment i add one more element let's say now what i will do i will just copy this and i will add chetan over here right now the moment i do that and this happens right this happens then your charlie will not be skipped this guy will try to move to forward right it and it will try to move forward right and while moving forward it checks it checks if anything in your list is modified now how it will check if you go inside our list then there should be something called as then there should be something called as let me try to find it mod mod count right so there is something called as mod count that means if we are modifying this particular list right so what is mod count now the number of times this list has been structurally modified right so initially this count will be zero right but the moment you delete bob this count will be one and now when this iterator moves to chetan it will first verify if you have modified anything or your mod count has been changed right and if that particular mod count is changed then this guy will throw concurrent modification exception if the value of this field changes unexpectedly the iterator or the list iterator will throw concurrent modification exception so that's what is happening over here last time it did not have any next element so it skipped everything and your loop was completed but now it found that there is one more element before processing that it will check if your modification is done if your list has been modified that means your modification count has been changed it should be here somewhere so if you see over here it is this this is basically the function which is used to check the modification has been done and it will check the modification count is not equal to expected count right right so that is basically concurrent modification exception this is something which i recently faced that's why i am adding it in this particular series the crux is we should not ideally do that even if you see it is working it may not work in different cases there are very few cases where it might work which is not actually working rather it is silently skipping the iteration that's why it seems like it is working but it is not now if you want to do that at the end you can make use of something called as iterator right so this is basically you can directly make use of iterator and this guy should work just fine so if you see over here it is working just fine right and if you just want to remove there is a remove if method as well in the array list right so if you try to search remove if right so this is basically the method which will remove stuff from your list and will not throw any error right so that is basically the way how you can fix it so that is basically your concurrent modification exception so something to keep in mind that it may work in some cases we should completely avoid that so that also is done we have seen all seven cases and all seven examples right so that is basically it if you learned something new in this particular video let me know in the comment section if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about all these cases that's it for this video see you in the next video